Hey there, you're looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Six months had passed since Daniel lost his position as a high-powered executive, and each day seemed to chip away at his once unshakable confidence. His polished shoes, now scuffed from endless pavement pounding, clicked a desolate rhythm on the sidewalk. He loosened his tie, a gesture that had once felt powerful, but now seemed like a futile reminder of his former life. The weight of rejection pressed down on his shoulders, causing him to slump in a way that would have been unthinkable in his corner office days. As he waited for the crosswalk signal, a familiar voice cut through the cacophony of rush hour traffic. Daniel, is that you? He turned, squinting against the glare of the setting sun. A petite woman with sleek auburn hair and impeccable makeup waved from the doorway of a chic storefront. It took him a moment to place her. Rebecca, he called back, surprise momentarily lifting the cloud of despondency that had become his constant companion. She beckoned him over, a warm smile lighting up her face. I thought that was you. It's been ages. How have you been? Daniel hesitated, uncomfortable with the idea of admitting his current circumstances to his former secretary, but something in her genuine warmth broke through his reserve. I've seen better days, he admitted, running a hand through his hair, which was in desperate need of a trim. Rebecca's brow furrowed with concern. Oh no, what happened? Before he could answer, a gust of wind sent a chill through him, and Rebecca ushered him inside the salon. The warm, fragrant air enveloped him, a stark contrast to the chill of impending autumn outside. Let's catch up properly, she insisted, leading him to a plush seating area near the back of the salon. Can I get you a coffee? Tea? Daniel sank into the soft cushions, feeling out of place among the pristine white and chrome decor. Coffee would be great, thanks. As Rebecca busied herself with the sleek espresso machine, Daniel took in his surroundings. The salon hummed with activity, the snip of scissors, the low murmur of conversation, the whir of hair dryers. It was a world apart from the corporate environment he was used to, yet there was something soothing about its energy. Rebecca returned with two steaming cups and settled into the chair opposite him. So tell me what's going on. Last I heard, you were killing it at Hartman and Associates. Daniel wrapped his hands around the warm mug, drawing comfort from its heat. I was, until I wasn't. He took a deep breath, the scent of roasted coffee mingling with the salon's potpourri of hair products and perfume. The company went through a massive restructuring. My entire department was eliminated. Rebecca's eyes widened. Oh, Daniel, I'm so sorry. How long ago was this? Six months, he replied, the words tasting bitter on his tongue. I've been job hunting ever since, but he trailed off, gesturing vaguely at himself. Rebecca studied him for a moment, her gaze shrewd. You know, she said slowly, we might have an opening here at the salon. Daniel blinked, caught off guard. Here? But I don't know anything about this. He waved his hand, encompassing the bustling salon. A mischievous glint appeared in Rebecca's eye. You don't need to. We're looking for someone to handle the front desk. Appointments, phone calls, that sort of thing. It's not exactly what you're used to, but it's a job. And who knows? It might be just what you need to shake things up. Daniel opened his mouth to refuse, but the words died on his lips. What other options did he have? His savings were dwindling, and his pride had taken enough of a beating over the past six months. I, I suppose I could give it a try, he heard himself say, as if from a distance. Rebecca clapped her hands together, beaming. Wonderful. Can you start tomorrow? I'll need you here at 8 a.m. sharp. Before Daniel could fully process what had just happened, Rebecca was whisking him towards the door, chattering about uniforms and schedules. As he stepped back out onto the street, the cooling air shocking his system, he wondered if he'd just made a terrible mistake. The next morning dawned gray and drizzly, matching Daniel's mood as he stood outside the salon's locked front door. He tugged self-consciously at the collar of his crisp white shirt, 
feeling overdressed and out of place. The click of heels on wet pavement announced Rebecca's arrival. Good morning, she chirped, far too cheerful for the early hour. She unlocked the door and ushered him inside. Let's get you set up, shall we? Daniel followed her to a small room off the main salon floor. First things first, Rebecca said, pulling a garment bag from a locker. Your uniform! She unzipped the bag, revealing a pale pink smock. Daniel stared at it, uncomprehending. This can't be, he started, but Rebecca was already pushing it into his hands. It is, she said firmly. Everyone wears the same uniform here. It's part of our brand. Daniel held the smock at arm's length as if it might bite him. But it's pink, Rebecca raised an eyebrow. Is that going to be a problem? He swallowed hard, thinking of his dwindling bank account and the stack of unpaid bills on his kitchen counter. No, he said quietly. No problem. Excellent. There are black leggings and shoes in there, too. Get changed and meet me at the front desk in five minutes. As the door closed behind her, Daniel stared at his reflection in the small mirror on the wall. The man who looked back at him seemed a stranger. Tired eyes, unkempt hair, a shadow of stubble on his jaw. With a resigned sigh, he began to change. Five minutes later, he shuffled out to the front desk, acutely aware of how the leggings clung to his legs and how exposed he felt without the protective armor of his suit. Rebecca looked him up and down, nodding approvingly. Much better, she said. Now let's go over your duties. The next few hours passed in a blur of information how to use the booking system, the proper way to greet clients, the intricacies of the product displays. By the time the first customers began to arrive, Daniel's head was spinning. You'll do fine, Rebecca assured him, giving his shoulder a squeeze before disappearing into her office. Daniel took a deep breath, plastered on what he hoped was a welcoming smile, and turned to face the first client of the day. Welcome to Glamour Goals he said, the rehearsed greeting feeling foreign on his tongue. How can I help you today? As the weeks passed, Daniel slowly began to adjust to his new role. The pink smock no longer felt quite so humiliating, and he found himself taking a certain pride in keeping the front desk organized and running smoothly. He even started to enjoy the banter with regular clients, a far cry from the stilted small talk of corporate boardrooms. One particularly busy afternoon, as he juggled phone calls and walk-in appointments, he caught sight of his reflection in the gleaming chrome of the espresso machine. His hair, grown out from its former severe cut, now fell in soft waves around his face. The constant exposure to the salon's environment had given his skin a healthy glow, and there was a sparkle in his eyes that had been missing for months. Earth to Daniel, a voice called, snapping him out of his reverie. He turned to see Cammie, one of the junior stylists, grinning at him. Admiring yourself again? You're getting as bad as the rest of us. Daniel felt a blush creep up his neck. I was just, never mind. What do you need? Cammie leaned on the counter, her rainbow dyed hair falling in a curtain around her face. We're all going out for drinks after work. You should come. Daniel hesitated. He'd kept mostly to himself since starting at the salon, still feeling like an outsider despite the staff's friendly overtures. Oh, come on, Cammy wheedled. Even Rebecca's coming. It'll be fun. Something in her earnest expression weakened Daniel's resolve. All right, he found himself saying. Why not? Later that evening, Daniel found himself squeezed into a booth at a trendy bar, surrounded by his co-workers. The chatter and laughter washed over him, a stark contrast to the lonely evenings he'd grown accustomed to. So Daniel, Wendy, the salon's color specialist, leaned in conspiratorially. Got your eye on anyone special? Daniel choked on his drink. What? No, I, I haven't really been thinking about that. Wendy and Cammie exchanged a look. Honey, Wendy said, patting his hand. It's time to get back out there. You're not getting any younger, you know. Daniel bristled at first, but as he looked around at the genuine care and concern on his co-workers' faces, 
he felt something inside him soften. Maybe they were right. Maybe it was time to start living again instead of just existing. As the night wore on and the drinks flowed freely, Daniel found himself relaxing in a way he hadn't in years. He laughed at Cammie's outrageous stories, commiserated with Wendy about difficult clients, and even joined in a raucous karaoke rendition of Girls Just Want to Have Fun. It was well past midnight when they finally spilled out onto the street, saying their goodbyes amidst hugs and promises to do this again soon. As Daniel watched his co-workers, no, his friends, disappear into the night, he realized with a start that he was happy, truly, genuinely happy, for the first time in longer than he could remember. The next morning, nursing a slight hangover but buoyed by the previous night's camaraderie, Daniel arrived at the salon to find Rebecca waiting for him with an odd expression on her face. Everything okay? He asked, hanging up his jacket. Rebecca bit her lip. Daniel, I have a proposition for you. It's a bit unorthodox, but I think it could be mutually beneficial. Daniel raised an eyebrow, intrigued despite himself. I'm listening. Rebecca took a deep breath. My boyfriend, Derek, he's been complaining that his place is always a mess. He works long hours, and I'm here most of the time, so neither of us has much time for housekeeping. I was wondering if you might be interested in picking up some extra work. Daniel blinked, trying to process what she was suggesting. You want me to clean your boyfriend's house? Rebecca nodded, looking slightly embarrassed. I know it's not exactly in line with your previous experience, but I'd pay you well, and it would only be a few hours a week. Daniel's first instinct was to refuse outright. The idea of scrubbing toilets and dusting shelves for his former secretary's boyfriend was almost too humiliating to contemplate. But then he thought of his nearly maxed out credit card, the looming threat of eviction from his apartment. Pride, he realized, was a luxury he could no longer afford. All right he said, the words tasting ashen in his mouth. I'll do it. Rebecca's face lit up. Oh, thank you, Daniel. You're a lifesaver. I'll give you Derek's address and the key. Can you start this weekend? As Daniel nodded numbly, he couldn't shake the feeling that he'd just taken another step down a path he never could have imagined for himself. That Saturday found Daniel standing outside a sleek high-rise apartment building, a bucket of cleaning supplies in one hand and a key in the other. He took a deep breath, stealing himself, and entered the lobby. The elevator ride to the penthouse seemed to take an eternity. When the doors finally slid open, Daniel stepped out into a spacious modern apartment that made his own cramped studio feel like a closet in comparison. He set down his supplies and looked around, taking in the floor-to-ceiling windows with their breathtaking city views, the gleaming kitchen with its state-of-the-art appliances, the plush leather furniture that probably cost more than he made in a year at his old job. A wave of bitterness washed over him. This could have been his life if things had gone differently. But instead, here he was, about to scrub someone else's floors and dust someone else's knickknacks, with a heavy sigh, Daniel tied on an apron and got to work. He lost himself in the mindless tasks of cleaning, finding a strange sort of peace in the repetitive motions of scrubbing and polishing. Hours passed, and gradually the apartment began to shine. As he was putting the finishing touches on the living room, the front door suddenly opened. Daniel froze, feather duster in hand, as a tall, handsome man in a tailored suit strode in. Oh, the man said, stopping short at the sight of Daniel. You must be Rebecca's friend. Dan? Was it? Daniel. He corrected automatically, acutely aware of how he must look, flushed and disheveled, wearing an apron and clutching a feather duster. Derek's eyes raked over him, a small smirk playing at the corners of his mouth. Right, Daniel. Well, don't let me interrupt. Carry on. As Derek disappeared into what Daniel assumed was the master bedroom, he felt his cheeks burn with humiliation. This, he thought bitterly, was what he'd been reduced to, being dismissed like a servant by a man who probably couldn't even remember his name correctly. 
But as he finished up and prepared to leave, Derek reappeared, now dressed in casual clothes. Hey, he called, causing Daniel to turn. Good job with the place. It looks great. The unexpected praise caught Daniel off guard. Oh, thanks, he mumbled. Derek leaned against the doorframe, studying Daniel with an intensity that made him squirm. You know, Derek said slowly, Rebecca mentioned you used to be some hotshot executive. What happened? Daniel stiffened, his hand tightening on the strap of his bag. Life happened, he said shortly. If that's all, I should be going. As he hurried towards the elevator, he heard Derek call after him. Same time next week. Daniel didn't answer, but they both knew he'd be back. He had no choice. Over the next few months, Daniel settled into a routine. Weekdays at the salon, Saturdays at Derek's apartment. He tried to ignore the growing sense of unease, the feeling that he was drifting further and further from the life he'd once known. At the salon, his transformation continued. His nails, once blunt and utilitarian, were now always neatly manicured. His skin glowed from the array of products he'd started using, urged on by Cammy and Wendy's enthusiastic recommendations. Even his posture had changed, softened from the rigid stance of his corporate days. One Friday afternoon, as he was restocking the retail shelves, he overheard a client chatting with her stylist. Who's that new girl at the front desk? The client asked. She's so pretty and helpful. Daniel froze, realizing with a start that they were talking about him. He waited for the stylist to correct the client to explain that he was, in fact, a man. But the correction never came. As he mechanically continued his task, Daniel caught sight of his reflection in one of the salon's many mirrors. The person staring back at him was almost unrecognizable from the man who'd walked into this salon months ago. His hair, now past his shoulders, framed a face that looked softer, more delicate. The pink smock no longer looked out of place on his slender frame. For the first time, Daniel allowed himself to really look at the person he'd become, and to his surprise, he didn't hate what he saw. That Saturday, as he let himself into Derek's apartment, he found himself humming softly, a tune he'd picked up from the salon's playlist. He was so engrossed in his cleaning that he didn't hear the door open. Well, well, Derek's voice startled him. Aren't you a sight for sore eyes? Daniel whirled around, nearly dropping the vase he'd been dusting. Derek leaned against the wall, his eyes roaming over Daniel in a way that made him acutely aware of how he must look. Hair pulled back in a messy bun, cheeks flushed from exertion, the curve of his hips accentuated by the apron tied snugly around his waist. I, I didn't realize you'd be home, Daniel stammered, setting down the vase with trembling hands. Derek pushed off the wall, moving closer. Clearly, you know, Daniel, I've been watching you these past few months. You've changed. Daniel swallowed hard, unsure how to respond. I should go, he said, reaching for his bag. But Derek was faster, his hand closing around Daniel's wrist. Don't, he said softly. Stay. As Daniel looked up into Derek's intense gaze, he felt something shift inside him. The last vestiges of his old self, proud, ambitious, uncompromising, crumbled away. In its place was someone new, someone who reveled in the softness, the femininity he'd discovered. Okay, Daniel whispered, his voice barely audible. I'll stay. As Derek pulled him close, Daniel closed his eyes, surrendering to the new reality he'd created for himself. The man he used to be was gone, replaced by someone he was only just beginning to understand. And for the first time in a long time, he felt no regret no longing for what was lost, only anticipation for what was to come. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.